face. Everyone have a good weekend. Gosh, how are you, Steve Volgaridis? Are you new to face, Steve Volgaridis? Yep, totally uh, new. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our community. You're going to really you. like one of our analysts, Steve Volge. He, nice so, he has a similar name. Yours is longer, but... N nice to be nice to be here. Looking forward to seeing what you do here. Okay, you let me know if you need a refund, okay? I'll send it <laughs> posted to. Send it to Athens, please. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, hey, buddy. So, how's everyone doing? Let's have a great week. Everyone say that. Let's have a great week. I think it matters. You know, so uh, this is what we're going to do this week. We're going to have this mantra, okay? Mr. Market, I've done my work. Prove me wrong. This week, you're going to challenge the markets instead of making them challenging. Is that a deal? So that means you don't trade all the time. Okay, so, you know, it's interesting. Uh, during one of Greg's presentations and, you know, uh, something I've noticed for years is uh, he didn't trust action on Monday. Okay. So it, to me, I interpreted it as, you know, he wouldn't initiate new positions on Monday. And, you know, I look back and most of the stuff I do on Monday uh, isn't as successful because I know my style and my style is, you know, looking for reversals all the time, you know, you know, uh, even within a trend, so this is possibly why Mondays aren't the best day to initiate new positions. I'm not saying don't hold any positions. Hi, Monica. Because I look at Fridays, you look at your weekly chart. Okay, so uh, let's look at cable. So it was an up week, right? This candle here. So normally what you get on a Monday is follow through from what happened the week prior. Give me a why if you get it. Okay, so you're usually gonna have follow through. You rarely have like a market closing real well and then a sharp gap lower. I mean, that can't happen on news. I'm not saying anything always happens, right? Qualify it, nothing always happens. Maybe it happens more often than not. That's as close as we can get. So, um, you know, I don't see anything compelling that I'm going to do today. But uh, going into this week, over the weekend, you did your homework, right? You went over all our stuff, right? You did your uh, personal analysis. And as a subscriber, hi, Amanda. You went to all of these different instruments and got views from Grega and Andre and Blake and Steve and Stelios, depending upon what instrument you have an interest in. And you look at what they're saying on different time frames, right? So looks like there's gonna be some work updated. Right now, I'm just showing a weekly on Euro. Let's, let's look at cable. Just showing, showing monthly. Okay. So maybe it wasn't the best day to give an example, or I don't know how to use the uh, platform. Anyway, so you do your work. You go over all the areas, all the formations. And, um, you know, maybe you admire Blake's trading. So, you look at what Blake's saying here, all right? There's his work. So what you're seeing right here is the same thing that Blake's staring at. Thank you, Rick. Okay, so maybe you, you, you know, want to, you're a budding Elliotician, right? Well, you know, here's a pretty good guy to model yourself after. 
right? And so you're, you know, you're trying to learn wave structure. Well, you know, if you just look at Greg's work um, over the course of time, you're going to start to learn because, you know, elioticians, as many elioticians as there are, um, it, it amazes me how many different counts you could get for the same market because there's always these alternate counts and not everyone does Elliot the same way. Thank you, Mr. Robot. Maybe you like Andre, maybe you like harmonics. I mean, to me, harmonics are new and I've been around for a while. So if I wanted to learn about harmonics, you know, could you find a better guy? I mean, I've interviewed a lot of people that use harmonics. One guy claimed to be the inventor of it. You know, he invented Gartley. Actually, I think one of the first guys to really start working with harmonics is Larry Pesavento, who I know from Chicago, and I've been on the show a few times. But Andre's a master. So, you know, if you're uh, gravitating towards this type of methodology, you have, you know, real pro and you learn by watching. I don't know about you guys. I'm a I'm pretty visual, like our president. And if I hear it, it's how I got through school. I never read the textbooks. I, I don't have the uh, attention span to sit and read. But if I attended lectures and I heard what they said, which is great about face, because you're hearing what we're thinking. And you learn from hearing about these things, like, you know, maybe Monday is just a follow through day from the rest of the week. And maybe you you look at your results on trade you initiated on Monday. But this is what's gonna make you better is surrounding yourself with traders that are better than you, at least uh, your equals. And they're all in here, they're all in the chat room. They've blocked me. Oh no, look. Oh, let's see. They're going to let me in. So, you know, you ever hear this expression? Why would you want to join a country club that would allow you in? Right? So, anyway, you could tell they have a heart if they're going to let me in to, you know, bring my personality into the mix. So this is where you're going to learn and not just faces an hour and a half a day, right? And half an hour is uh, an interview. But these guys are, at, hey guys, uh, I know you're on the Jumbotron. I, I haven't done this for a while. Hey, there's Blaker. Okay, so I mean, Blake hangs in there. What about during the day, say two hours from now? All right, face is over. There's some news, it moves cable. Amanda's in here all the time too. Nice call on the end, Amanda, from last week and the week before. Um, this is really going to be an edge for you. So if you're serious and it's not just a hobby, you need to join. So I'm going to come out of the chat room now. Okay. Hi, Mom. Okay. So anyway couple of things I might be looking at uh, well I am looking at so the the Swiss was pretty good to me last week even though the dollar was stiff had a pretty negative week you know shows up better on the one hour we had this you know because we closed here the week before and I'm thinking maybe back towards uh, 25 or 30 because you know when I look at this daily here it's just sitting on this ledge of support that held and we had an up week with some follow through here. If we take out this 9870 level, there's some big space underneath it than you have here. Um, and I don't know if this is going to be precipitated by risk off, risk on, but uh, I think that, you know, we're putting in some type of distribution top here and a breakdown under 98 and a half would be an add on. I'm going to be selling rallies up here around 25, 30, maybe another 10, 20 pips higher, but I'm not going to do it today. And that is why. Why aren't I going to do it today? 
because we are following through from the rebound the Swiss had on Friday. So we'll see. I'll let it have a day to stretch its wings. Uh, looking at the end, boy, this uh, screwed up some technicians, huh? Breakdown. Back above the channel line. So I, I'm not a big fan of channel lines, but, you know, it does tell you this kind of looks like a false breakdown. But, you know, I can't buy it here because maybe it's a failing rally. Uh, I'm looking at uh, yields, and last week uh, talked about that there was potential, even though we already accomplished this, you know, ABC, hit targets, cleaned out buy stops here, that there could be one more push up here with risk on, okay, and certainly you have risk on, right? I still say the NASDAQ's a better short. Um, I think we're going to top this week. You ever hear me say that before? Never. Huh? Personally. Huh? Uh, Personally, uh, never. The boy, <laughs> the boy who cried wolf. Uh, <laughs> anyway, there'll be a top in the market someday. And uh, I'm going to be there. I still think this is it. Steve, I want to, we'll look at, uh, you know, a couple of the issues. Uh, perhaps, you know, well, Microsoft won't be open, but... Um, it looks like your charts, they're all headed, they're all headed towards your numbers. So I've been pretty long winded of uh, the, the other trade I'm laying for and it held. And now, you know, I thought we might have a chance to get up to 58 and a half. So far, we did make a new high in crude at 58 and we had shy girl on and uh, drew this channel. So you could take a screenshot if you like, here you go. It's a four hour chart and the upper side of the channel comes in right around this fib level maybe a little higher up here 5885 so we'll see if that develops too i mean so far i think that this action all right you know you're talking about a couple of weeks and if it's correlated to economic strength in the stock market you have to say it's really been dogging it right so um that's on my watch list for short. I hope you had a great weekend, Blake. I know the weather's beautiful. I have friends that, you know, live there and, you know, they're really enjoying being able to just sit outside. And oh, yeah, this is barbecues. top. This is this is top down weather right you now. Probably played golf. I didn't. Actually, I did uh, not. I did uh, not. Uh, perfect the, weather. Yeah, it, it, it's really, you know, it's uh, it's funny. We have such great golf courses. I tend to play more in the summertime uh, when it's hot, and because the prices are oh, okay. um, are yeah, are, are more reasonable, so I can go play the courses that normally cost like two hundred dollars around. I can play them for a hundred. But you know, in those in the winter time, it's like two hundred fifty dollars around. I'd rather you know, I'd rather yeah. just go drink beer somewhere. Would it be fun to have the whole team uh, on a miniature golf course? That would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> if you're willing to uh, fly, fly everybody in from Europe, yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. I'm, I'm down, I'm down for many, that. Let me look at my, get, let me look at my piggy bank. It's how much? <laughs> how, how many beers do we get for $250? How much is it to fly from uh, <laughs> Athens to uh, California? Oh, it's a lot. Oh, gosh. It's, it's got to be uh, 1500 1500 bucks, I would say. Each way or round, round, round trip? Round trip. Round trip. Yeah. Round trip. Yeah. Ah, peanuts. Yeah. All right. you get, It's a deal. Yeah. So what are you doing this morning to help me pay for these tickets, Blake? I'm doing, uh, aside from sitting in a you know, dollar yen short, I'm not doing uh, much of anything. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just sitting around it. You know, the, uh, if you watch the, the week ahead video, let me, um, pull up the grab it here. yeah uh which screen am i using now okay this one um so you know uh, if you watch the week ahead video i i was really focused on the s p and uh i pulled up the index this is the s p index and you know this is the uh what i was hoping for today what i was hoping for is we would have some sort of you know um uh you know little gap down and when we'd leave up a um a uh, uh, island top, island reversal, but that's not going to be the case. I mean, the market. Well, maybe in a, it will, but from a higher level, because we have another gap. Maybe eventually we do leave an island. 
We we could, I guess. Um, but you know, I mean, maybe it, it's sure a scary looking short right there. But oh, oh yeah, I mean, those it, are it's, the best ones. Yeah, the ones that make you puke. Yeah. Um, so you know what I was pointing out is that we are at a hundred and sixty one percent extension of this move. Um, uh, you know right there 161 yeah. percent extension of this move uh but we have surpassed all the other fib uh extensions that was the confluence um that you saw you know here here okay we had this um uh uh 127 uh, percent uh right here oh i'm sorry it was this wasn't the one where we that we had a confluence right here this is 127% ext uh, you know what, let me make them different colors. Uh, that probably will help. Um, we had this confluence right here going into this last week, you know, 127% extension, you know, a couple of those fibs that were, were working. And then, you know, we broke out. We were just, you know, we were nudging our head up against the, the, those numbers and then Friday, uh, we have, we, we broke out now. Um, was this there trade market, news, positive trade news or something to gap it today? Um, well, we're, we're, uh, yeah. So the, I guess Cudlow or okay. uh, the, the, well, there was positive, um, China, okay. U S negotiations. They had a talk on Friday. Uh, you had this, um, this, uh, 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 uh very small interest rate cut. Uh, on reserves in China overnight. So that that's all, you know, the market's okay. very much in um, FOMO mode, um, no FOMO, yeah, you know, or, or uh, you know, missing, missing the fear of missing out. Hold on, let me grab a, let me grab volume. Uh, no, whoops, let me go to favorites. Uh, built it now where, where I was just. And didn't Andre have some type of harmonic uh, pattern in NASDAQ that you showed last week, Blake, that, you know, uh, I'm wondering if it blew that out. Yeah, it's some type. Of, it may have been a Gartley or something. Um, but you know, maybe later you deal with it. Do your thing here. Yeah, let me let me go ahead and why is my volume? Where, first of all, I guess I got to ask where did my volume go, and why isn't it appearing? I also think, uh, coach, that this week we'll find some some type of sort of top. Uh, but with the whole game they play with, you know, follow the carrot with the trade deal, etc. I I doubt it that it's going to be, you know, the top. I yeah. think we might as well be headed to, you know, a blow off type of situation like the one we had in uh, January uh, of the of eighteen. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. But. Next time, I think it's going to be the final. Like this one, one right? Yeah, this one right here. Yeah, um, yeah, but I think the next one is going to be fatal. That that's going to be it. Well, we'll we'll see. Um, but what what I wanted to put on point up here is volume is pretty anemic on this rally, and uh, and and so that's something to note. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to stop either. So th this market is, you know, everybody is, you know, wanting to be in the game when there's a china us trade deal that's the bottom line you know everybody want no one wants to miss out on this on this uh you know uh phase one signing if you will and so the markets are you know extending their gains and if you the, the, i'll go over to the the cfd which is the the futures basically and you can see this is friday this is today we continue to extend now you see, uh, that supports volume there the yeah, other one, the other one just didn't the, support volume. Was it? Yeah, the the index did not, and but you can see how anemic the volume is on the on this rally, you know, and that's something to note. That's a that in my opinion, that's a fairly big you know deal. So, um, but that doesn't like I said, it doesn't mean it's going to stop. It doesn't mean the market's going to you know just you know roll over and die. It's just the the market's not supported on on strong buying. What what the hell is going on right now? Um, wait, hold on. Mood in Beijing about trade deal is pessimistic. Government sources tell me this is a uh, Eunice Moon. Um, uh, she says trouble. Uh, China troubled after Trump said no tariff rollback. China thought both had agreed in principles. Strategy now to 
talk, but wait due to impeachment, U.S. election, also prioritize China economic support. So that is uh, from Eunice News. Uh, Eunice Eunice Yoon is she is a uh, CNBC host and commentator. So let me pull her. Um, uh, um, dang, dang. Uh, here, let me pull up her Twitter profile. You can read this here, and that that just is getting hit and you can see right here this is two minutes ago and um this is uh what just came out and you can see that the dollar yen's rolling over stocks are rolling over a little bit as a result to, to this so you know we have to be a little careful i you know is this do, do you need to run out and start shorting the market I don't know about that. I'd, I'd probably watch price action. You know, for me, it's like, well, for me to, to actually want to be short s and I, I really would like to see some lower lows on a weekly basis. That means we'd have to break all the way back down before th below 3075 before I feel really comfortable. But this, um, this, you know, Eunice is, she's always the, uh, the, if you watch CNBC, she is the uh, anchor on CNBC in Asia. So this is a fairly big deal when she has sources tell me, you know, CNBC is pretty good as far as, you know, delivering, you know, the, the breaking news when it matters. And they have good reporters like Eunice that's, you know, that's, that's out there, especially regarding China. So um, dollar yen is really under some pressure right now. And it uh, looks like the futures are coming off. Um, quite a bit too. So, you know, just some food for thought. Now, look, stocks haven't opened yet. Um, you know, and I, I was looking at that index and stocks will open an hour from now. So who knows, maybe an hour from now, we, uh, we, we, we are trading down here uh, at uh, 3110, maybe another 10 points lower. And we end up getting that, uh, um, you know, uh, island top reversal in the S&P. It could happen. Um, so, you know, you guys have to just, you know, keep a real close eye on what's, what's developing. And I think this is the big news. I mean, obviously it's the China U S trade deal. I mean, there, for me, there's really nothing to do right now other than focus on what's happening with China U S I've clearly mentioned, uh, and talked about, um, uh, hold on really quick. Let me just read Okay, I just want to retweet that. Um, Pretty good fade going on right here in the S and P. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Th there is. Um, I think the Chinese are gonna are gonna really grill Trump. You know. Yeah. There's in, no in deal. The There's no deal. In, in the worst way possible. I mean, in order for for him to save face, he had to divide the deal in phase one, phase yeah. two, phase three, or whatever. Which, in essence. Phase only one thing is, they need from us is food okay yeah, fa I, that's phase it. one is nothing fa phase one is nothing and and they're, they're even playing hard to agree on phase one because they know he needs a deal they need well, pork and pork that's what they need yeah pork, I, pork prices have doubled blake so you know if you have any mushu pork or in china you know that's their main uh, meat protein. You are such an American. I have to yeah, say you, that. you know it's going to sound funny. To you. <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I, I and I'm it proud. Was a whole, I, and I used to be proud to be here. one. It was a whole issue here because they're buying our pork as well. So Greek the pork. Of, it's not kosher, yeah. man. All right, guys. So hey. The, no, all right. The, pr Go ahead. the price of Suvlaki has skyrocketed. <laughs> so um, this is a pair that I think everybody should be watching. This is the Euro Aussie. This will tell you a lot of the, you know, kind of mood uh, in risk appetite, especially when you're dealing with China. And I've been watching it carefully. And the reason why is we we had this, you know, uh, you know, this ascending wedge. We kind of did a false breakdown here. You notice we're coming right up to resistance. I, I, I have an alarm actually set, uh, a couple of different alarms set on this downtrend line. Uh, this this is a 618 retracement. This is also, you can see a 38% retracement right here. Now we also, we, we have um, uh, RBA meeting minutes later tonight. So that's something else to pay attention to if you're if you're focused on this. But a move above the 38% retracement, which is 132.90. 
I think that's going to be a fairly big deal for the Euro Aussie. Um, you know, if we break this, but, but, you know, the, the reason why the Euro Aussie is more of a focus for me is because, A, I believe the Euro, as you, many of you know, um, Euro is going to be a risk off type of uh, indicator for me. Um, it, I think it'll go higher. Um, the Aussie will go lower if it's regarding China. So if we have, you know, negative China Euro uh, China risk off it's going to show up in the euro aussie so i believe the euro aussie is like the one currency pair that i think we should be watching right now and that's why it, it, it the, the if we start breaking into the like the let's just call it 163 level uh i think that is truly a risk off indication regarding china and right now um the dollar yen is really just giving it up one of the other things i want to point out before i pass it over to you steve is uh, take a look at the euro yen big rejection this morning on the euro yen. Uh, if you have Forex analytics, you were notified that we hit the 618 big downsloping trend line. We, it, I think you got notified. Well, let's just take a look here for those of you that don't use it. Um, basic technical analysis. Uh, this was one hour ago, Euro yen trading at downtrend line and 618 retracement. This is a big resistance for the pair currently. And that's where we were at. We were right at, um, you know, 120.60. Uh, we are 120.36 now. So it's dropped quite aggressively. Um, something that you guys should be watching. And this is, I got to go back to CNBC. This is a really, really big, you know, this is a big um, deal uh, in, in my opinion this uh this um this china news because this um you know mood in beijing about it. government sources tell me i mean you know she's 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 got her sources um yeah anyway all right well that's what we should be watching this morning of course it's all happening as we're speaking so uh so I'm going to have to go deal with my account right now. Um, I, I, I bet <laughs> by the end of the day, we're going to have like a hundred, um, uh, you know, statements from the U.S. side that everything is okay. Everything is moving in the right direction. Oh, sure. You know. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, of course. You, 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 you know that's coming. But oh, yeah. I'd rather take the word of somebody with boots on no, the ground. I agree with you, you know, the, I, I the, the administration you. is going to be here to smooth over anything that they're, they're like, holy crap, the market's starting to get unwound here. Let's, uh, you guys get out, um, block a block a, you know, get on Fox News right now, um, say something good. And, you know, that's going to happen. I mean, you, you know, it's going to happen. So I, I, what I would not be doing is chasing the market lower. Um, if you didn't get a, get a, you know, trade off at the 109 level or at the 108.90, then, you know, uh, wait for a bounce. You know, if you can, if you can get a bounce back to, you know, one, 108, maybe, you know, 90 again, you know, that might be an opportunity. To, Are you to booking something here, Blake? No, no, your no, short? no. I, I, I want to, well, I'm short right around here. So I actually want to stay short into the next year. Okay. That's, that's my because I'm in cool. the camp. All I'm right. in the camp. Just what Steve said. I 100% agree that I don't. I just don't think China's gonna do it. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna. They're gonna unless they get exactly what they want, which is basically getting us back to where we were two years ago. I don't think they're gonna play ball. And I think what are you thinking? Like maybe 105 on the weekly or new uh, lows? No, well, you know, that it's to be seen. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more in the camp as long as we stay below 109.50, I'll stay short where we go. I'm not a, I'm not a palm reader or a, an astrologer is a strong astro, astro, astrology yeah. guy. You know, I, I, I this, this wedge, um, this tells me that we could break down to 106. We could break, as far as I'm concerned, we could break this whole wedge if things yeah. really start to unwind. The whole so, triangle, yeah. The whole triangle. So why why am I going to you know limit you know what my what my possible upside is here, if if the potential is that we could trade back towards 100, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll stay in the trade um, as long as we 
not we don't break higher I, i'd like to stay I bet, in a, I bet if we go there you're in and out of it a hundred times i no not necessarily really? i'll probably be working a core position um okay. you know like you know i'll just I'll give you an example i mean okay. you know and I'll, I'll, there, we don't have any do we have any news coming out right now steve do you know let me see mate. uh uh a uh, housing market index that's later okay never mind oh no it's coming out um shortly but actually it should be it's, right now right uh, no uh, no it's later oh it's in it's later it's it is later okay so uh i i do have to go though but let me oh, let yeah, me buddy. just say th let me just say that you know if we do something like this yeah you know we find like 200 day moving average or you know somewhere yeah. around these lows i might cover some and then look for a bounce to you know sell some more and you yeah. know I, and and try to cover you know bits and pieces and you know try to sell into rallies I, i'll do that if, if 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 under the right conditions it it has to be that you know this china u.s trade deal is unraveling then you know i'm i'm gonna try to hold on to a core position so yeah yeah all right. Oh, okay, thank guys. you, Blake. Hey, thank you. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day and uh, good luck today. And um, be careful out there. It's kind of squirrely. Okay. Let's let's hope we get some movement at least. Let's do it. Yep. All right. Thanks, Thanks Blake. That's Steve. Hey, Goats. So, uh, what made you S think S this was going to happen this week, and it's actually happening today? S S N P has already given. Yeah. Everything back from the overnight. Yeah. You rem you remember how long ago we were targeting a specific zone here, right? Yeah. Okay. See it. And that was what one point six one eight came right off it. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I think we could be witnessing. You know, I'm not saying the end of the bull market, but I I actually, uh, you know, why can't we trade twenty nine hundred again? I see you just have a little pull back to, you know, back to the breakout. That's that would be natural. That's a pretty good trade from here. First area of support, in my opinion, would be the retest of this intermittent trend yeah. line, which currently passes, let's say, at three thousand fifty-five. Yeah. And the next and more important downside support would be this three thousand and twenty yeah. uh, level, which had capped price action for quite some time, right? Right. So retesting that as support, um, you know, would be, you know, a, a very nice target, as you mentioned. Um, I would also very much like to see an, a very negative day to day, having left behind, you know, that upper week in new all time highs uh, pre uh, market open. You like know, a bearish be a nice... engulfing candle would be nice, right? I'm not sure uh, what yeah, the but term you, is, but. We're we're asking for dark a cloud bit. cover with uh, potential showers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that yeah. what it's for called? For dark cloud cover, we need like a move. Let's say outside it day like, under Friday below thirty one oh six, below the middle of uh, Friday's candle, and for and an golfing we need a move below three thousand ninety six. Not unlikely, not impossible for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I, as I said before, be, just before we got the news. I am. I was expecting a pullback this week. Uh, personally, though, seeing how the administration is, you know, handling uh, things, um, you know, I, I, I think it's quite possible that we get after a pullback, uh, you know, more all-time highs, right? Uh, uh, but I, I, I'm quite um, convinced that the next type of blow of move to the upside is probably going to be terminal for this rally. Okay. I know a lot of people are pointing cycle people and uh, I actually do have a financial astrologer with us today. Kate is from Australia and uh, she's got an ebook on it. And, you know, cycles uh, are pretty close. Cycles are sometimes based on planetary work. Uh, not always, uh, you know, Wheeler and all these people. Uh, but I know a lot of people that are looking towards next spring, Steve, for when cycles really start to turn negative. Mark, Mark Newton being one of them. Yeah, 
can be the case, but yeah. you know, keep in mind on what I said last week. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to the elections. Um, if this market starts unraveling, even you know, like a decent correction then the market won't go up again. And the reason it won't go up again is because it will have to start violently repricing the possibility of Trump being re-elected and instead in his place getting some type of a socialist president. In which case, you know, we're going to have like a huge move to the downside. Um, so... Um, Thank you, Steve I, I, Cooperman. <laughs> you know, you're laughing till you know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, thanks for filling me in here. I, I'm interested in what you're thinking about across the board, too. And okay, Kate, I uh, see you in the house. So at the top of the hour, we'll be, I see your hand raised, too. So uh, we'll be talking then. And yeah, take it away. even a little bit earlier, depends on what the market does. Now, okay. All another right. thing, Let another thing that uh, you know is worth mentioning today, besides the probable, let's say, reversal. Of course, we need a lot more time to confirm. Is and this should come as no shock or surprise to anybody. Is that the fact that the cable is breaking out? I mean, if you remember, I think in unison, all of us kept saying that this is clearly a corrective move, right? And people that were expecting the cable to like, you know, roll over and die. Um, I'm afraid they're still in the wrong side of the market. Um, so we're seeing the cable breaking out from this flag. And I think we can get another extension towards 133. Uh, look at the RSI as well. We're seeing the exact same yeah. thing. Price breaking out, RSI breaking out from an equivalent trend line resistance. So nice. second point to mention is this. Now, it was also worth having a look at the Gappi. And you can see here why. Because I, I had marked since last week this triangle in the Gappi, expecting one more push to highs. Um, now, theoretically speaking, we have already fulfilled the minimum target because as you see, the high of today was a higher high, right? And we're now pulling back. I mean, we, we exceeded this high here marginally, but we did exceed it. Now, ideally, um, I would have liked to see, and it, it might still happen, of course, right? An extension towards this resistance area at 143 before we see like a deeper pullback. Uh, but as I said, we marginally uh, printed the new high today. So, you know, all bets are off about if we're going to make it 143 or not. Now, two more pound pairs that are both interesting to see. We mentioned that last week. The fact that the pound doses moved lower was clearly corrective. And, you know, an extension was expected to the upside. But, you know, we need to stress out here that now the pound dose is once again approaching this expanding triangles uh, in line resistance, right? There you go. So, you know, this is not the place to be buying it. This is the place to start being quite careful because this trend line has already uh, rejected price like four or five times in, in the past few months. So, if you played the breakout here, that was a great trade. But on the other hand, if you haven't, this is not the place to start considering uh, buying it. By the way, Blake has left his microphone unmuted. I'm going to mute him. Okay, great. We could hear his office. Um, so, Pound Kiwi. Pound Kiwi uh, was clearly lagging behind the Pound Ozzy. Uh, but, you know, the structure looks quite similar here. I mean... Correction, uh, clearly capped by the psychological level of two. Um, testing once again this penance resistance. Uh, wouldn't be surprised at all if it follows uh, pound dozy to the upside and we see an extension towards 210. I think that against 
these lows at two, uh, the risk reward ratio is still very, very appealing for a move to the upside. Even the RSI, if you notice, first of all, was hitting over overbought levels multiple times, which is a good indication, you know, that the short-term trend and then, um, at least the short-term trend is is higher, right? Um, and, you know, we've seen the RSI reset back toward like more neutral levels, but it now seems to be um, moving higher again. So, especially if RSI also breaks through that trend line, I think we're going to see that um, extension I was talking about. So, now that we covered um, the pound pairs, which were, you know, definitely uh, interesting um, for the reasons we mentioned, um, let me also say that obviously what's going to happen with the fate of the USD yen will have to do with, you know, the risk appetite today. It hasn't definitely started well with this news. But keep in mind that, you know, there is still a bullish and a bearish case scenario, both of them alive. The bullish case scenario, of course, remains to, you know, being this inverted head and shoulders formation, the neckline of which is roughly at 109.50. And, you know, on the other hand, you will need to see a break like below 108, 107.90, you know, to get some type of a lower low. Now, anything in between, in my opinion, is just gambling, right? So, I mean, trading it between 108 and 109.50, I mean, if you sorted it close to the neckline, that was excellent. But, you know, we're currently in the middle of that range. So, you know, doing anything in the middle of that range is in my opinion, you know, not worth it, right? Um, it's purely a gamble. Now, the dollar has started um, paring back its gains from uh, like a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, you know, we, I want to see if it's going to hold here, retesting that high as, as a low <clears throat> or not before I decide, you know, what's, what's the case here. Um, you know, price action is not that easy to read, obviously. I mean, we still remain in an ascending um, uh, channel, but, you know, the um, inclination is definitely not steep. Um, so it's it's more of a crawling higher type of situation. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not convinced in any move to the upside. Um, I think that with momentum lacking for so long, um, adding several fundamental reasons, um, you know, uh, eventually expect that the next big move is going to be lower. Now, does this mean it's going to happen from here? No, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen from here. I mean, just look at the price action we've had in that channel. I mean, we started trading this channel at the end of 2018. So it's like in a month, it's going to be exactly a year. Um, so, you know, who knows? I mean, it can go on for more months, right? Now, crude is having a decent move lower today. And I remind you that we've been following this ascending channel for quite a lot uh, of time. And, you know, and everything here in the price action is telling me that, you know, this is not impulsive, it's corrective. So we stalled for a big period of time in that confluence of the 200 daily moving average and the 50% Fib. On Friday, we, you know, sliced through it and, you know, closed above it. Uh, but we're in danger of finding ourselves trading below it once again today. Uh, if we do close below that uh, again today, um, Friday's price action will most likely have been, you know, a head fake. So, um, you know, would I be sorting here? I mean, under circumstances, I would consider it, but I can tell you one thing for sure. You can definitely sort the breakdown of this channel if it happens, because if that's the case, I believe that, you know, we're going to be headed back towards like 50 and a half, 51. So, you know, there's going to be plenty of room to the downside and a very appealing uh, risk reward ratio, even if you decide, um, you know, to be more patient.
Now, let me go through your questions and see. Trump, US cannot and will not cave in to China. Agreed, this is massive. Markets have priced a deal with rollbacks. Uh, hi, Steve, your thoughts on USD CAD, NZD CAD, Euro USD, and pound. Okay, we covered the pound. So uh, having to do with the Euro USD, I told you that my gut feeling is telling me that it's going to squeeze the market in the same way that the cable did. Um, when we were breaking down below this double top, which I actually had made the double top the chart of the day, um, I, I, I believe that we're going to get you know, an extension lower. I like how we held the 61.8% fib, and I want to see what's going to happen here by retesting this 11070 area. Um, eventually, I believe that uh, the euro USD against what most believe is actually going to do something like this. Okay, uh, doesn't mean that it has to happen from exactly here, but I I believe it's going to happen. So 11070, we're almost there. Is uh resistance so you know pay attention to that level now having to do with usd cad and kiwi cad that you asked um let's start with the usd cad there it is okay one thing that you know can give you a nice bullish indication in the usd cad is the fact that we had a false breakdown from this you know, long-term ascending channel. And, you know, frequently false breaks, um, you know, are terminal and then you get like, you know, the totally opposite move uh, taking place. So, you know, I would be very, very hesitant being uh, short the USD card here. Uh, but on the other hand, and you have to keep that in mind, 133.50, which is a confluence of resistances, has capped price action like, you know, numerable times, right? So, you know, on the other hand, it's not easy to buy it against 133.56. We're not that far away. So um, I would want to see more price action here. It would definitely be appealing shorting it at 133.50, right? Um, or alternatively, it would be appealing considering buying it at 131.40. But where it currently stands, I wouldn't be doing anything with it. Now, having to do with Aussie card and Kiwi card, I know you asked only about the Kiwi card, but you know, since we're gonna have a look at one, we can as well have a look at the other one. Um, Aussie card, Nice breakout from that wedge, but guess what? We got rejected from the first support resistance area that really mattered. Now, there is one bullish scenario here that can still play out, and that is something like this, right? Retesting that as support and moving higher. But all in all, you know, trapped in a range here and more or less in the middle of it. So if you want to trade it long against this trend line, risk reward is there for another move to 91. Now, if you want to look at it more as a range, then the risk reward isn't there because we're in the middle. And the Kiwi card, which you asked for, has broken above this triangle. I like the fact that it came down, it retested the triangle, and you know it moved higher. Now um currently testing resistance we can even mark it here there you go you can see it a break above it you know then we'll open a move towards 86. still you know there is no question about it you know, we don't yet see some type of a momentum higher that would make me really enthusiastic about it, right? I mean, in both those pairs, the moves higher look corrective to me more than anything. Of course, you know, even a correction can extend 
you know, decently. So that doesn't mean that you can't make money to the upside, but it means that personally, I would be looking for other currency pairs to trade uh, instead of those. From a fundamental perspective, Powell comments were telling, if there is no deal, then bonds and stock will fall together. US fiscal position is overextended that our debt is unsustainable if there is little, no economic growth. Yes, there is little, no economic growth. There's no question about it. And Powell is a huge hypocrite, right? A huge hypocrite. Because the Fed is the last one that can blame the fiscal position of the United States because the only one that enables the United States and, and you know, other countries to be fiscally in, irresponsible is central banks and their monetary policy because they distort with their monetary policy uh, market discovery yields would have been very very much higher you know um, if, if they weren't intervening and buying back debt um, so in essence they complain about fiscal irresponsibility when they're the ones that make it happen. So yes, his comments are, are correct, but he's a hypocrite because you know him and the central bank and you know the rest of the central bankers um, are actually making that happen. Because if they stopped helping with monetary policy, fiscal irresponsibility, governments would ha would have immediately to cut down uh, spending and they would have to shrink government size um, and they would have to, uh, you know, to, to balance or anyhow get the budget closer to balance. GBP is likely to be impacted by TV debates tomorrow. Boris does not connect with public as well as Corbyn. Still think pound in uptrend, but due to stall a bit. Yeah, I mean, it can happen, but... I think we're just breaking out, so I would expect, I mean, yeah, this last break higher might prove to be terminal in the short or medium term. Yes, I, I can agree with that. Uh, but let's open it here. But I think it, it will first run, you know, more, right? Before we can see like some type of a deeper um, corrected move. To the downside so this is probably like um you know one last thrust and then perhaps we can see you know like a deeper correction but as long as we stay above this broken purple wedge um i think you you shouldn't be trying to fight uh pound strength i mean i know as a fact that a lot of people have gotten seriously you know hurt by being in the wrong side of the market um so um you know i i don't think you should be repeating those mistakes <laughs> ziggy what is a budget you know something i know that you're joking as you wrote but I, i've started wondering uh if you know a lot of the people in charge actually do know what a budget is uh prefer to play long euro pound as per daily comments yeah, having to do with euro pound, since you mentioned it, don't forget that the euro pound has also broken below that triangle we were talking about, about and I actually have a pattern in play in that. And don't forget that my target remains 84.80, right? Uh, I was expecting the breakdown from that triangle. I said it multiple times here. And as you see here, I established this pattern in play November 11th. Uh, this is my local time. So it's roughly like one hour before the webinar. You know, triangle. It's already like half a percent in the money. Um, uh, you know, it looked to me like a very, very easy, uh, uh, you know, trade in the sense this was a textbook bearish consolidation after that sharp move lower. So can euro pound and higher absolutely but i do think that it it would at least first hit 8480 okay so not yet
as with the pound, I think not yet. Soon perhaps, but not yet. Great analysis. Thanks, Coach. Uh, let me see if I have any questions I haven't covered. Nothing yeah. has changed in the in, in the metal complex, by the way. I mean, we 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 were seeing weakness today, and you know, some of it went away with the news, as you see. Um, you know, still gold consolidating in what is likely a bullish consolidation, a pennant or whatever. Uh, silver, this sixteen sixty sixteen seventy support area is is still holding nicely. Um, I, I I still believe that you know the the next big move is again to the upside, uh, but not unlikely to see more consolidation or more weakness uh, in the short to medium term. USD knock, yep, we can cover that as well. Um, USD knock, I can tell you before I even open the chart. Last week it closed the week, as I wrote in the weekend analysis, at a very key support area. You can see here why that was a key support area. Like a oh, um, head and shoulders formation. So nice rebound from the neckline. Uh, but, you know, there is still a decent likelihood that we are building this head and shoulders formation, right? So things are quite simple. Uh, 907, let's say, uh, is key support. Uh, a breakdown down from 9, 907, uh, I think will bring us down to at least 892, which is an area of support. So, um, you know, until that happens, you know, you have to be more cautious. 917 is resistance. So, you know, um, it is what it is. I, I believe that it, it is a good likelihood that we're going to actually break through that neckline and at least make it to 8.92. And I'm going to trade that as well uh, as I did the euro pound uh, triangle break. Um, so that's what I think. Coach? Coach? If your guest is here, Steve, I'm here, and yes, Kate is. Okay, perfect. Then you okay, can buddy. go ahead and start the interview. And uh, Ben Maldonado, if you're here, I saw your comment. Uh, yeah, could it be your point seven today. Nice, uh, nice call. Okay, and Guatam, uh, you're uh, you have a lot of. Uh, Ideas, you know, if you're interested ever in being interviewed here on Face, ping me on Twitter, and maybe we could find a day for you. Okay, Kate, gosh, it's been such a long time. I'm going to uh, make you a panelist. And unmute you. How are you today? This uh, early morning hour for you, right, Kate? I'm good, actually. It's, um, it's an interesting time, so it's a good time to be awake. I think to see what goes on in the market for a little bit of Okay, are you on talking to me on a speakerphone? I'm not sure why. I had my um, computer would be funny. I've got an echo. It's kind of echoey. Okay, let me Sounds like on. you're in a tunnel. One minute, hang on. It's like uh, everything went retrograde. But perhaps if she has more, if she has more than one microphone, so if she has yeah. a headset. Oh, you know what? She uh, she did register twice. So I, her name was up there twice in the participants. Uh, okay. Do you see so, it twice? Let me, let me I used the top one because that's where she raised her hand. Yes, I do. I do see see her twice. Yes. So maybe what I don't know what you could do. Mercury retrograde. <laughs> okay. See you're Sorry. echoing. Yeah. Uh, I just, I'm, one sec. I I think you've logged right. in twice. Hi, from a, 
Is, is that have better? you also log, logged in from another computer or twice from the same I've computer? I've got to one. I'll just quickly turn off the other one. That's all right. Um, okay, you sound better good. now, Kate. Yes. So if you mute the other one, we should be fine. Okay. That hopefully... It did. Got it? You're good, Kate. Okay, great. So uh, it's been a long time. Didn't we do this once <laughs> on, uh, on FX Street? Yeah, I think we were waiting for a top all those years ago. So that didn't quite happen. <laughs> that, that was no, I, I think we I think we did one on FX Street. Yeah, we did. And I think we were looking, you know, back then, I think it was trying to sort of thinking all this doom and gloom, which never happened. And we just kept going and kept going and kept going. Um, I would say my astrology is probably, uh, my financial astrology, that is, is a lot um, more developed. All right, do you want to share your screen? Do you have uh, anything I, to show us? I, I, look, I can't because my computer did a Mercury retrograde, but I did put a couple of things on my Twitter, if you can show it. Um, I just threw up a chart of California, which is really quite alarming for next year. Okay, so what are you talking about? Earth changes? Okay, well, coach, why don't you say you're I'm going I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to. Let's see. Okay. You know, from that chart last year, I was sitting in a – and I, I said to a friend of mine, before the earthquake, I think there's going to be an earthquake in California because we were talking about some, you know, financial astrology and what I'll probably tell a lot of your listeners – you know, I kind of learned to trade on Wall Street and I worked for a fund on Wall Street and I've worked for a Forex fund. So I'm not your typical velvet astrologer. I'm a trader who uses astrology. So, you know, I'm sort of always really coming from a trading aspect. And then for me, I guess the financial astrology is a bit like a confirmation bias or a tool that I use. Okay. It um, gives you your biases, Kate? Sorry, what's that? It gives you your biases. Yeah, I mean, you know, the chart is, you know, a chart, a, a proper stock chart is always number one. I would never take a trade without a chart. And I think I use the financial astrology for time. And then the timing combined with the chart entry is how I put it together to know that my risk and my reward is the absolute best it can be. Um you know, sometimes it's quite, I have, I play sort of, you know, I have a, a mentor. I don't know if you know David Green. He used to work on the floor of the Stock Exchange back in the 80s or 90s. Oh, uh, wow, anyway, he's old. Yeah, <laughs> we actually put our stuff together now. Look, when I was learning to trade. You like older stuff, guys? Oh, look, he's a, he's a dirty old man. <laughs> okay. <I'm>, uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kate, so. You so know, he, we put it together now. Okay. So I use, he gives the levels to the floor still to this day mm -hmm. to Peter Tookman, who you probably know Pete. And now we sort of tend to put our work together a little bit, um, more as an experiment and just to play around. So this chart that you've got there, th there's a really strong cycle in finance and the, in economics of Saturn and Pluto. And they're these two really big, heavy, heavy planets. And there's a lot of history of Is them when these? they come. They're, See they're my the cursor? Ones have, yeah, the ones that I've circled. And if you have a look at those circles, they all have a number of 29. See and it, see it. Yeah, look, the thing 129 is here, 229s here. Is this more yeah. powerful? Because it has two 29s. Um, Galileo. I don't know if you've heard of Galileo. Oh, uh, uh, um, yeah. Yeah. So he was kind of one of the first people that sort of looked into all this astrology. Look, astrology is maths, really. Proper, proper astrology. Not like, oh, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. Do you really think Galileo was one of the first? He was. I actually was just... How about Italy. Daniel? How about, Look, the, uh, uh, how about the wise men? Look I'm, look, I'm all sort of coming from the perspective of how he did it and the stuff oh, that... Oh, okay, because, you know, yeah, that's been going on forever. No, no, no. Like, you know, his studies and the stuff uh -huh. that he did and, you know, I was, I was just in Italy and I went and visited his, you know, I looked at all the big tools he used and stuff. And, you know, astrology is really maths. And those numbers are what are called degrees. Right. And... 
until you've got these specific numbers, nothing will actually happen. So it's about all about one kind of little symbol you've got there, which is a planet, making a specific degree, which is those numbers to another planet. And you've got some really, really big, heavyweight planets there. They're kind of the big bad boys. One of them's a good boy, but he's not, not talking nice to them. And you've got some really heavy, heavy planets all lining up there. And, and that's what, March of next year? That, that specifically is just the California chart. Oh, I see. That is the date you've got there on the top right, which is um, for March, 19th of March, 2020. I don't so know how, how do I make money if I survived the earthquake? Buy a caterpillar <laughs> tractor and well, uh, uh, be know, there for the we, rebuild? We've got a date coming up on the 21st of January, which are these two heavy planets, Saturn and Pluto, are going to make... They're going to come to the same number. And I would probably be sh maybe short into that. I've definitely, I'm going to be short. I'm a little short now. I think actually personally we top about on the 24th or 25th of this month. You're talking equities? Yes. S&P, NASDAQ? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. whichever that's going to be. It's okay. Hard to know. All right, the market. Okay. Yeah, let's, you know, one thing with financial astrology, if, if Donald Trump is manipulating, I don't know if anyone thinks he's manipulating or not, if there's manipulation, the astrology will show up eventually, but manipulation always comes first. You know? Mm. The, you mean like the, central bank, central planning? Yeah. If, mm. if, if Trump's just trying to keep this market up while the impeachment stuff's going on, if he's got the ability to do that, then all the astrology in the world is not going to How does he up. do it? Just with news flow? Oh, look, I, as, uh, my thoughts are probably the same as everyone else sitting out there tweeting it, you know. Look, who knows, you know. This whole Twitter thing clearly is quite something. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of financial astrologers were expecting a real, quite a big crash maybe three weeks ago, which didn't eventuate. I, I don't, I've sort of stayed away from that stuff a little bit at the moment, but there's a very, very strong positive thing coming in a week and it's very possible that we because we're going to kind of top anyway at the moment I think anyone with a chart can see that we're so stretched from the 200 day moving average it's ridiculous so you're uh, thinking this is a top not the top I think it could be the top on the 24th depending what time zone you're on the 25th of December I think it could be the top mm, okay um so you know I think I'll take a short position just after that and I'll probably run it. And then, then this, this thing's coming on the 21st of January for, for everyone, not just California. This is kind of this big, it's called the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And I've put a link to an article on my Twitter page if anyone wants to have a bit of a look. Which one is that? Is that this one right in the yeah, spring, the, the, the March out here? That's underneath that. Um, and I'll put some, other, some others so, on as well. Yeah. I see it. So uh, do you correlate uh, an earth change like an earthquake with a financial earthquake? What's it? Look, you know, my thoughts, and it's really out there that there's just so much wealth in California, you know, that it almost, you know, the entire U.S. wealth is, or the entire uh, London. Like I think it's the fifth biggest in GDP California, in the yeah. world, right? You know, you've got Google, Facebook, all that. Look, I don't know. My, it's just, I just... Look, it's hard to something something weird is going to happen here i don't know what it is i don't want to come out and say there will be an earthquake but i'm watching this day well you did you said event outer ring yeah look i did pick the last earthquake so well uh, know, okay <laughs> so you say you don't want to say it but you write it down you know that's not a really good thing to be doing uh, but okay uh, I'll, I'll 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 have our i'll have our it guy edit out the uh <laughs> Look, I just, you know, it's just, uh, I'm watching it with interest is probably the best way I could say it. But, you know, I would watch what the markets do on the 24th or the 25th, depending, I think you're the 24th over there. I have there. an idea, Kate. I'll pay mm -hmm. for a ticket and you come out and we'll have dinner on the coast on March 19th yeah. at 12, 14, yeah. Yeah, 15. Look, of, what do you think? Um, look, a lot of my work is timestamped, you know, and one thing with financial astrology, it does allow well, you to... What do you, I'm in, is Thanks. that an acceptance of my invitation you for you to have dinner during the, the earthquake like with me? Huh? 500 
Yeah. On the 24th and we come down the thousand. <laughs> I'm like, you know, uh, it's our 21st you, of January. You don't want to be here? I mean, I'm offering you a free ticket. You don't want to be here in California on the 19th? Exactly in December and, and into January. So okay. we can do that possibly. Okay. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, look, you Mr. Know, Dale making a date. Yeah. Look, okay. I'm one of the few people that will stick my neck out with hard dates. You know, that's very yeah. few people. I put my money where my mouth is. That's the one thing with what I do being a trader okay. and a financialologer. Uh -huh. I right. actually take trades and stuff, you know. Look, I do do a lot of stocks, mostly equities primarily, because I find look, my style of trading, I've sort of I've sort of done there and sat there and done all the pairs and forex and you know, I, I learnt through the crisis and I'm kind of into the, I like a good long swing trade now. That just suits my style. And one thing I think I'll say for people, if they prefer a, a swing, then that's a really good tool to use because it's some, again, you've got that confirmation bias so you can weather the ups and downs a little bit. If you're a real short term kind of, you know, intraday person, then it might not be so useful for you because that's not where you're going with it. You know, you've got to really... So to find future. swing to me, two, three weeks, a month, well, no, uh, look, uh, four days. Look, some companies I will run for a good six months. You know, some mm. I'll even to a year, or if I want to, you know, have this sort of tax three free mm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all just an evolving style. Next year, I'm sort of just going to play with coming in right before because I feel like a lot of my stuff they manipulate down, <laughs> and I don't end up getting the best price, and I get really annoyed when people get pr better prices for me when I see the move. Um, but yeah, look, I, you know, I, I think, and I look, I have been preparing my folio in saying that as well for the last probably, I have quite had quite a large folio and I have been selling out for net because of next year, not liking next year very much. So, you know, there's a lot of preparation that you can do with financial astrology. Um, there's your website. You know, yeah. And, you know, okay, I'm going to continue. There. I just want to let you know, this comes up on it. That's all right. Well, it hasn't been there. So, anyway, uh, you're not going to send an astrological virus into anyone's. No, we don't do that. We're okay. all about. Stuff, you know? <laughs> you're all about love. Way because I think it's good. It's it's good karma. I don't, I don't yeah. charge it for my work, and I give it all away. So you know, one thing with um, you know, just related to I guess your markets. You know, there are a couple of of things. You know, like if you're trading crude, you really need to watch Neptune. Because Neptune rules oil, and every time there's when a planet goes backwards, it's called going retrograde. Every time Neptune goes retrograde, there's a crash in the oil markets, and then every time it goes forward, the oil, oil markets move forward. Um, again, gold. You've also got Jupiter, which rules gold, and Jupiter's I'm sure some of those don't work out. Ah, uh, they're pretty good. Look, Jupiter's about to change signs in the first week of December and it's going from a fire sign into an earth sign. And when, when Jupiter's in fire, gold goes really well. Personally, I think gold's going to not do so great for the next, um, you know, year or two. I think coming out of fire, I think it's had its oomph and I think it's ready to just kind of plod along for a little while. And I'd probably think probably not till 2022 when it goes into Aries, which is a big bullish fire sign. That'll be the next kind of really big up. You know, if the markets crash, does gold do the inverse? You know, it's really, really hard to sort of understand the inverse trades, I think, a little bit at the moment. They tend to, look, this is your domain, but to me they seem quite different to what well, they Well, that use. time frame, if you believe in lags of monetary policy and that the weakness we're seeing now is from QT, that only stopped six months ago, but started over two years ago. And now we're feeling the effects of it. And the Fed is now reversing course. Um, this new regime may not take hold for a year and a half or two years. So that yeah. kind of makes sense. That would make sense. And, you know, back in before, you know, there used to be an uh, Aussie dollar gold correlation yeah. all gone. And that, you know, where do you keep your cash? You keep it in Aussie, or uh, what currency do you move well, your, after, look, after all your big winning trades? Where where do you move your cash into? I'm going to actually split it up between currencies next year. I, I don't like the Aussie at all. I think we're in for a massive recession here, especially if we're so linked to China. Look, I, I was actually reading something before, and I think China's going to the what? The I can't say. Is it the one? I'm very bad at saying this. No, that's good. 
Yeah, December 28th, I found a date of the one that it's really going to hit a really, really bad, bad downward spiral. Um, you know, we're very, the Aussies very linked to China and us economically. So I'm kind of actually going to spread out a little bit. You know, there's so much news now and just split it up because I don't, how do you know what to do kind of thing, you know? Um, but the Aussie dollar is ruled by Neptune. Like, what are you going to split it up? You're buying euros, dollars, what? I think the euro is way, over, way overvalued. Um, so I probably wouldn't go too much into euro. Um, I don't know what your thoughts British on that. British pound? Are. Maybe some pounds and some US, you know. You, so the dollar will still be king? I haven't, look, I haven't done, it's, it's very stressful when you're in Australia knowing that we're about to have an economic, likely economic collapse. So we are at the mercy of China and, you know, our housing markets and all, all that sort of stuff. So it's, um, there's a lot of planning needs to happen when you live here. I think with you guys being in the States, you're quite lucky that your markets and your dollar and, y you know, it's, it's a pretty much a pillar of strength. So you don't have to worry so much to exposure to other countries so much where you, where you are, whereas we have a really big worry with our Chinese exposure yeah. and our and our ties, you know, um, China have literally bought most of Australia's property and businesses and ports. And if they fall apart, we're in big trouble, you know. Um, you know, the, the Aussie dollar is in each each um, a currency is ruled by a planet. And you probably have to do some Googling and stuff. And the way I've done that chart, all currencies have their own chart like that. So once okay. you kind of learn how to do this, you can run Natal. a chart for or do you do it based on natal when the currency came into when, when, being? When it, when, yeah, when it first started trading. So we, what, one big thing with financial astrology and what's really, really important, particularly for uh, indexes and for companies, it's the date it first starts trading on the exchange. It's not the date that, say, a company incorporates itself. It's always the date that the company trades to the public. The IPO date. Yeah, the is exactly the IPO date. That's that's okay. always what we use, and we never ever use an incorporation chart. Um, you've got like obviously Mercury retrograde is really you know I've got a whole YouTube thing on that. Um, I never ever trade a company that IPO during Mercury retrograde. Uh, one thing they do say with Mercury retrograde, it doesn't matter what the market is, but you'll often have a trend change every one to three days, and then all your supports well, and shop. Yeah, which is really weird that the markets haven't chopped too much into this one. That's why you can sort of tell there's because, uh, funnily enough, Bitcoin is the absolute, reacts the strongest out of anything I've seen in Mercury Retrograde. You have a little period before called a shadow and every for the last maybe five or six, Bitcoin has plunged into every single one of them. You could almost do you, uh, do you have a wallet not made out of leather filled with crypto? No, I'm old school. I was, I was trained by that dirty old man on Wall Street. So <laughs> he's not really. But, you know, I'm really old school. I'm not into I don't do all the crypto. I'm, I'm not saying that's anything good well, or bad. Well, I mean, not, not trade it, but just believe in it. No, I don't understand it. I don't trade anything I don't understand. Good rule. That, yeah, I think that's really, really important. And I like things that have um, an asset. Let's, I don't tend to love um, ETFs and all the VIX, you know, because they don't really own anything. They don't have assets. They don't, you know, anything that's kind of just a made up thing. How, Not made far, up. Out, how far out do you look? Like, for example, I interview Norm Winsky. He's a, you know, he's been doing this for 40 years too. And he only looks out a month at a time for his subscribers and signals. I, and well, I'm wondering, I'm do you ever look out like, you know, what could happen? Like, I know you do, you're, you're talking about uh, 2021. 20, Didn't you bring that yeah, up? Yeah, look, we have a six months. I think, you know, you get too caught up in the, in the what's going to happen. I think you really need to focus in the now a little bit as well. And I think- Great advice. It, yeah. Do the right thing today and tomorrow takes care of itself. It, Exactly, you know, um, because you can also, the trade can really go against you when you're looking too far out because not everyone else is looking that far out. They're looking at the chart of what's in front of them right now. Right. So, and that's what everyone's seeing the same thing on the chart. And that's 
almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? If everyone's seeing the same thing right now, you might prepare. Look, it's different when I'm preparing myself to sell stuff because I know if a strength comes and it's, you know, particularly on equities, like I can get out, you know, and I don't wait, you know. Um, so that that is a little different. But I would say six months tops. But with financial astrology, and it's one thing I've done in my book, there's almost like a cheat little two when two planets come together um it's jupiter and pluto they're the two big sort of business it's it's luck and business and when these two planets come together there is a rule in financial astrology that an equity will top out in price within 10 days either side of this coming together is that what uh, gan called planetary oppositions uh opposition when it's opposite each other this is called what's called a conjunction when they okay. meet together um so it's, it's it's actually quite it's the absolute opposite thing okay. and i it's almost i, I kind of like to almost have like financial astrology for dummies i sort of try to te- teach it or show it in a way that it's it's just using a tool like on a chart so don't right. go and learn complex astrology look for this one thing and the i've Forrest had a Gump I, school of financial astrology yeah yeah All you right. know, I've had two stocks run do a 300 percent run both on the same this one transit has such a high correlate and raymond merriman was someone that really found yes. this i think raymond merriman's probably the greatest financial astrologer yeah ever um, so he, he was someone that, you know, and this has also come from a woman called Kay Shrinker. I don't know if you know of Kay. She's very famous in the States. And you can, you can really look for one thing which will create a top in price. Um, I, I probably should play around with some indexes. It, it, it's, it doesn't happen, you know, it, it's a 12-year kind of thing. So you've got to get lucky to find your stock that does that. So I kind of really, when you're saying I'm looking to the future, I'm looking for that one thing because I, I can almost find a date when I know a stock is going to top and that actually falls away dramatically after. So I sort of have this little crystal ball, I guess you could call it, you know. Okay. So I'm did you have something today? Because today could end up being a pretty nice reversal day in the S&Ps. I'm showing it right now if you could see my screen. Look, I'm short personally because okay. I just think it's too stretched. I'm not massive, you know. Again, I'm, I am chatting to my um, – you know, colleague in the US, and he, I know he is super, super. Um, I look, he, he does all these so weird things. Does your stuff, besides give you like a potential high or low, give you magnitude, or do you have to use a different tool for setting targets, just your charts and not financial astrology? I put them together. I would never use one without the other. You know, often. Um, you know, like sometimes you've got to use common sense as well with this sort of stuff. Look, I, I don't know what you think with that moving average, but that's looking pretty far down. Yeah, this is uh, the 200 right is here. Well, even what's that about? I don't know if you've got that's a 50. That's a 50. Uh, 50. Um, look, you know, David. And this is uh, what I teach. It's a throwover of a rising wedge or a lot of people are calling it a megaphone formation. Yeah, I mean, I use a 65. I when are we going was... here? See my cursor? When's this going to happen? Oh, look, that, that's, it's, yeah, I just told you I don't look that far out. I just, be, like, we haven't, it's funny thing is we haven't even. During the earthquake? It. Well, uh, you know, at least uh, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm short on March 19th <laughs> and uh, I end up in the sea, I guess I'm going to have to look, uh, change that, my so... will. Change my will to 17. It's just a chart then, you know. Look, uh, the, the thing is when you go short and if you're short futures uh, and you get it wrong, it's ugly. And we all know that. We've all been there. We've all done yeah. it. Um, so, you know, for someone that wants to play with futures, I think financial astrology is great because it's that, look, it's the only thing probably there is that can give you a date and time. Unless it, and GAM as well, but that is financial astrology. There is nothing on a chart that can give you an exact date that something's going to happen, right? Or a, pro, a law of probability. You get a so, window, right? Yeah, you know, I feel like as a trader, you have if you use time, you're going to have the edge over other traders, right? Because time is one of the greatest. The tincture of time. Yeah, and there is. Ever hear of a band called the Hands of Time? No, it was but my I, but my band in high school. 
Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Did you didn't get on the charts in Australia in that case? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Barely made it out of Skokie. All right. Anyway, I was just curious. If you were yeah. a, a groupie of mine back then. <laughs> <laughs> so look, the real thing, um, you know, I stress, it's just using, having the advantage of time. That is all financial astrology. It's another indicator on a chart, the proprietary indicator, I call it. Right, okay. And then you put that together, um, you know, even today for me, you know, I had a stock that ran 300% and I saw it. I even missed the blow off top move uh, because that's okay. even, you know, it was more powerful than so I So went saw. another 200% after you took it 300 Well, look, I, I about two, 200 but, you know, I picked yeah. that to the day before, right? You know, I got – so – and Isn't I that a, fun when a plan comes together? It's great. And it's even – you know, if you don't take it all, you don't take off. I've, you know, had takeovers right. to the day. But, you yeah. know, like a takeover is the most fun because you, you make your money that night and you're all done, you know, which is great. Um, so there's a lot of – I find it more fun just finding it. I almost don't care about the pro – it sounds crazy, but just the setup is so fun and it's so amazing to see it when it comes off. You know, it, it, the markets are a little different. Knowledge you know? is power, so you feel powerful yeah. having that type of insight, don't you? It's quite wild. Even I don't understand how I can do it sometimes, you know, yeah. and it is all time out through my Twitter is if people want to have a look, you know, the proof is in the pudding there. That's one great thing about Twitter. You can't just sort of say, say something, you know, you, you, you it's Oh, all you there. can too. It's and you know what people don't say on Twitter? What's that? I was wrong and I don't know. That's exactly correct. You know, and you know, I'm so, I don't know. What's Everyone say it 10 times. It's cathartic. Yeah. I don't oh, know. I, I don't know. Yeah, that, All right. that I was sure and that ate me alive. You know, look, personally, yeah. I don't trade futures anymore. I don't like them. When you live in Australia, they're just awful. Um, so if I ever trade the index, I usually, we have like our own little sort of Australian version of an ETF. I kind of only, I know, yeah. I know David, he, he uses TVX and stuff. He's, he goes, and now, he, you know, he used to go straight TVX and now he's obviously doing all the calls and the stuff like okay, that. Okay, so um, let, let's kind of uh, encapsulate this. Is this your next... Uh, since I don't know the time and you say time's everything, when is this happening or has it already happened? That's the California one. Look, uh, just tell okay. you. Okay. All right. That's okay. So this is, this is March so 19. That is well, March next year. No, that's next year. When's for this? That's next year, 2020. Okay. This is March. What's this? Uh, that, that all is one date right there. That okay, is just where? one. Okay. Where? Oh, this is all the one day. Yeah. So oh, if you go okay. to the other one that's next to it, the picture, there's lots of red squares and the squares are kind of bad. And look, anyway, so date wise, I think with the fun, we're looking, I'm looking at the 24th. It's right around the uh, uh, equinox. Spring. Uh, but you're right. Exactly. It is. I hadn't yeah. actually thought of it. Oh, funnily enough. Okay, well, you know, uh, uh, my yeah. yeah, you could just send a uh, hundred bucks of PayPal. Yeah, I'll, uh, just send me your PayPal, and I'll yeah. send that out. Uh, my bank wire <laughs> number. Anyway, you know, really, it was fun hanging out with you today. Yeah, so let's look at the twenty fourth and see if there's a big rally on that day, and then I would go short. After that, I will. I wouldn't say I, you should be. What I will do is I will take a short after that. I probably, in case that is a steam train. And then I will be looking. The 24th maybe, of this month? You're going to take month, a short? One week. One week. Okay. Uh, if we don't top before, but it could be a big day. Let's put it that way. And then maybe. Look well, you at know, the, Thanksgiving is the 28th and the bears feast on Thanksgiving and the bulls right. feast on Christmas. There you go. But, you know, it's funny, like, is there going to be a Santa rally? That's the other strange thing, you know, like there hasn't been many. So unless something happens that there's no Santa rally. But, um, yeah, I just maybe wouldn't short into that 24th if I'm not short yet. I don't know. It's a tough okay. one, you know. All right, um, well, so that, go ahead. Wait, what you want does on the 28th of December and then we'll look at the 21st of January and they're the, the next three dates. I really appreciate you sharing that with us today. No problem. I'll t you know, I'll be tagging you if anything happens. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the, the best way for people to follow you, Kate, is uh, on your Twitter handle? Right. It's with the Kate S with four nines. Um, anyone can ever send me messages. I'm one of those people that's always happy to kind of just answer questions and stuff like that. So, well, and then hopefully.
Yeah. Yeah, Kate, uh, I, I hope that this holiday season, the pips just rain down on you. Yeah, and, look, you know. Good. I've had a couple of good ones from the astrology. So I'm kind of I'm wrapping it up a little bit. So I thank yeah. you very much. For that. And I hope everyone, if they are going short or long, you know, goes really well with it. And it's a really frustrating market for everyone right now. So uh, pray for us for the Australian dollar for next so, year. <laughs> so uh, thank you for your time. I, I'm always, with- always rooting for you, my trading warrior sister. Oh, I love that. Thank you. We do our best in the big boys club, you know. Yeah, so. yeah you, do, you do better than the big boys. I know that. Yeah. Look, you I'm, and I'm Mandy a... and the whole cohort of you, you yeah, uh, yeah, are, are yeah, Aussie yeah. women uh, dream team traders. So uh, yeah. it was great. <laughs> it was great talking to you today. Kate. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for listening. Okay. All, All right. Good hunting. Bye. Thank you. Going to bed. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Thanks for staying <laughs> up, Kate. Okay, I'll see you. Bye bye. Okay, everyone. You like the show? I don't know. Did I get a date or not for Exco? She's not going to come and meet me here for the <laughs> the earthquake. Anyone that wants to come and hang out with me on March nineteenth of next year, uh, let me know. I'm taking reservations, and that's going to be a wrap. Keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Remember, when you look at the stars, just don't count the stars in the sky. Count your blessings. See everyone tomorrow. Good hunting the rest of the day and see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Adios. You're very welcome.